Hi guys, Squall here. Welcome back to uh, some more Rail Route uh, gameplay. This is episode two that we're on now. If you missed the first one, suggest you check that out. What we're doing in this episode is uh, we're going to expand our network a little bit. I have not changed the map since the previous episode, but what I have done is basically sit here and just mechanically change these switches and get these trains on time so that we've built up a little bit of cash and some experience so that we can unlock some things and build some things and keep it all fun and interesting and I can show you what the game has to offer. Now what I can tell you uh, is it's still very manual as you'll see I'll just let it play through now so I'm looking at this thinking oh he has to go to Bridgeton 3 he's leaving in 30 seconds so we'll cancel that switch put that switch in there let him through to 3 he'll then come through and then he'll stop and then I'll have to flick these switches here like that etc you get the idea he's going to Coming on three, so do that. Yeah, it is very manual right now. I'm having to sort of look at where they're going, think about the switching, do it all manually. It's tedious. Uh, also, we need to sort of expand our empire, if you like, uh, and decide on maybe where we're going next or what the next thing is that we should unlock. And this is where you have to make some uh, some decisions. Um, there's no real right answer to this one. There's just, you know, what you what you sort of feel when you're playing through is what you need. Um, but at this stage of the game, you probably don't know what you don't know yet. Uh, and that's part of the fun. But what I can tell you is we don't have any red experience. And that is a problem because that limits us to what we can actually unlock. There's, there's things that we simply cannot unlock yet until we get some of that red stuff. So how do we get the red stuff? Basically, by, generally speaking, two ways of doing it. These two here, Freight and Intercity. Um, they're going to cost five tokens, five green tokens to unlock Freight, and ten green tokens to unlo unlo unlock Intercity. Can't speak. Um, the Freight Train is interesting because it creates one-time Freight contracts uh, that will be offered. Instead of demanding high speed, these trains tend to block station platforms for a really long time. Being one time, they do not come back after an hour. Run according to pre-made timetable. Comfortable source of red experience. So they are the kind of train that will just come in, say at Brighton, and it will want to go to Cumbernaut on a platform and then just sit there for like 30 minutes of game time uh, or 20 minutes of game time, like whatever. And they'll, they'll, you know, you can't use that platform at all for anything else. And then they'll be on the merry way and then they'll give you some money and a red token that's one way of doing it they're not too difficult to handle they just require to have available platform the other one is the intercity train which is also a one-time train uh, but it demands high speed and that's what makes them difficult um, they do provide red tokens but their expected average speed is very high and right now we only have basic track so it's probably best if we stay away from those if we go down the freight route we need to be thinking about platforms. Now, right right now on Bridgeton, I've got a bunch of contracts that is, you know, quite honestly filling up the timetable. Uh, so we don't have any room at Bridgeton to be parking freight trains and we don't have any more platforms. The only possibility really is Cumbernaut unless we want to go to another station. We could perhaps unlock Newton. The problem with Newton is trying to loop it back here. Uh, you are limited when you... I'll just show you on this because we can always delete it but the sharpest turn that you can make is that uh you know you can't you can't loop this one here it's too sharp you can only make 45 degree turns which means you need effectively one two three four squares top to bottom to do a u-bend so bear that in mind uh, when you're designing your networks if we go with um if we go with Newton, we'll only be able to get into that line there, not this line here, if you see what I mean. Freight train coming through. He's going to be going to Eastern. Like that. So we just send him on his way. Uh, so the first upgrade we're going to get will be this one. We're going to get the freight upgrade because what we want is we need red tokens. Uh, so we can't go anywhere near into cities. They're way too quick for us. Uh, we'll just lose a load of money if we go down that road right now. So we'll get this. Um which will then start to spawn contracts for freight. Now we'll get rid of some of these contracts that we don't want. Let's say um, platforms that we don't even have yet. Coming on Bridgeton 2000, we'll get rid of that. So we'll leave it some space. 
for a couple. Um, other thing we can do is we can actually increase the size of that queue as well if we want to, but we won't do that just yet. We can go for some quality of life things. Um, for example, next station display is not bad because it shows you the next um, station that they go into, the next two stations they go into in the overview down here. Quality of life, smart sort will show you the trains that need the most attention. Um, you know, labels and stuff train labels that will give you an idea of where they're going and when can be useful automation is a key one auto reversing trains will be extremely useful for us right now it's a real pain having to remember to reverse trains but it needs a red token so we can't do that yet what we can get is automatic routing and that is a very useful upgrade so we're going to get that because that will unlock the automatic signal what's the automatic signal i hear you ask well, at the moment, we're having to flick these signals manually, right? And you have to set the switches before you do it. An automatic signal does two things for you. The first thing it does is it will work out the switches on the way that need to be switched. It will effectively switch anything up to the next um, signal, yeah? So any switches on the way to the next signal, it will set automatically. The other thing that it does for you is later on you can use different sensors to drive the signal so a sensor can tell the signal right you need to do this and that greatly improves automation so the first step is to just get the um let's get that set right there actually we won't clear that yet the first step is to get the automatic signals down let's get this train out of the way what i'm going to do is i'm going to we're going to redo this track because uh, we've got some money here so why not use it so we'll get that train out of the way there. And we'll pause it. And we're going to tear this down and rebuild it. And we'll use some automatic signals. Before we do that, I'll just quickly show you how these things work. So because we've unlocked some automatic signal, we've got one here for 10,000. You can put a new one down or you can upgrade the existing manual signal. So if we upgrade that one, actually, let me show you how it works currently. So currently, if I want to, if I've got a train coming down uh, here, We've got a train coming down here and we want to get into platform one we have to go set that set that set that go okay that's what we have to do right click to clear it if we change that to an automatic signal like this now notice that cost us eight thousand the reason it cost us eight is because we upgraded a manual which cost two so the difference of ten is eight so you only pay the difference you don't pay the full price if you're upgrading now, what an automatic signal does is when you click on it, it will highlight everything up to the next signal or platform, whichever comes first. In this case, it's the platform. So if we only go to platform one, we click it, boom. It just automatically set those switches. Right click to clear it, click it again, boom, it set those switches. Such a quality of life. I can't tell you how easy this makes life. So we're going to want one of those arriving in a station because they make it so much easier. And anywhere where you're going through sort of complex junctions will be a candidate for an automatic signal. It just saves you a lot of grief um, having to decide, well, which, which switches do I need to set and where? And it also makes for um, fewer errors. So that's worth having just for that as well. So I'm just going to take this apart here and we're going to rebuild it. So what I want to have is I want to have two tracks coming through here. So we probably want to have something along the lines of, uh, say, a track coming through like that, and then maybe another track coming through this way, something like that. So we kind of get rid of the passing loop and just have a, a more or less, you know, uh, right side driving train track um, is what we're aiming for here. Now, in order to link it up, I want to link it up to think i want to link it up to here so we kind of want to go something like that i think and then we might want to link into the possibly to the is that yeah that looks okay and then we want this one to be able to come to the and also come to here like that and then we'll probably have a diamond section there like that so something along those lines we don't strictly need this piece here because most of the time they, the trains can come this way and then use the diamond to get in. However, if something's leaving platform four, 
going through this junction here it's occupying the diamond and therefore we could in theory then route a train that way to keep it moving i'm um, not sure if we need it yet but that's my general thought and then we'll have a diamond down here as well so maybe what we'll do is we'll join that to there and then join that to there like that and then if this comes down like that we could have a diamond here and then do we need to join that not really we can leave it like that because they can get from platform one two three outbound they come in one two three inbound yeah we don't need one there so that will suit that um equally you don't strictly speaking need this section here uh you could in fact just do this you know that's kind of a bonus thing in a way but strictly speaking they can come that way and go through the diamond um so it's just a slightly longer run but it's probably tidier i guess um so yeah so that you know let's let's go with that we've still got 70 grand in the bank so let's get some signals down so where do we want our auto signals well almost definitely coming into here would be a good idea so you you can't put them on these on turns uh, so you can have to put them on a straight bit. The first straight bit we have is that one. We'll click it again just to reverse it. So inbound into this platform or this platform, we can now set those easily. Same thing here. The first place we can put it is going to be here, like that. Uh, the other thing you can do, I mean, bear in mind these are 10,000 each. The other thing you can do is you can upgrade these here. That would be an eight grand upgrade. It would make life a bit easier coming out of the track um, if you want to do it. And also, if we're going to have, um, click on the buy button, if we're going to have freight, we might want to have an extra platform. Whoops. Um, we might want to have an extra platform. So potentially, well, that's going to be a problem now, isn't it? Because we can only go, like, can't come to here. So we'd have to go to there like that. But that puts him on the inbound track, which is not great. And... We could send the freight train into here, then back out. Actually, I've just thought, if a train coming out of here, we'd need to have a junction there. So that would work. If we keep this exclusively for freight parking, it means we can wait till the, the line is clear and then route them across the track down the one-way section, which is not that uncommon. Um, it means a tra freight train coming through here can get out that way. And a freight train coming out of here can jump the track that way. So that's a decent compromise. And we could even have, if we wanted to, we could even buy that one and loop him in like that. So that gives us a couple of freight parking options down at Cumbernault. We're not going to be parking freight here. No way. No way, Jose. But uh, parking it up here is doable at one and two. So with that in mind... Do we want to upgrade any of these, or is that too expensive? Auto signal. We could. A lot of stuff comes out with two. This is a quality of life upgrade right now. Eight grand. Eight grand. And then maybe him and him. Something like that. Should make life a bit easier. So let's try it out. Uh, this guy wants to go to Cumbernault 4, so we're going to click this. And it will go to the next junction. So we can't... We could go that way. He, he will go that way, but we don't want him to go that way. We want him to go here first. So we click this. And then we should be able to go from here to platform four like that. You see how easy that is compared to what we've been doing? So much easier. And while that's all happening, we need to keep our eye out for a freight service so we'll just speed it up and let this run so in comes the next train so he's coming on three so we click to there so we just pre-clear him to here for now and then we could go ahead now and just clear him to three we'll still have to manually reverse and then we know we're going to bring him outbound so we'll click this and clear him to the next signal here and no further but that reduces the workload for us because we're not now setting all these switches everywhere. He's going into Bridgeton 3, so it is life is so much simpler at this point. A new contract in. Is it a freight? Yes, it is. Let me just slow the game down. So this is a 5,000 freight, but it pays a red uh, experience point, which is what we want. Notice the very low average speed. Freight doesn't care about speed. You can slow them down 
and give way to commuter traffic all day long. Now, it's going to want to pass Eastern House and then be inbound into Cumbernaut and then look how long it wants to sit at Cumbernaut. 45 minutes and then back out. We can do this. We can do this now. So we're going to click on it. Accept. And again, because it's a one-off contract, you only need to dispatch one train for this contract, but it has to have a predefined schedule. No train needed. Just comply with the schedule. Uh, be sure to check how long the freight will stay at the platform for intercities. You need to achieve target speed. We're not worried about target speed, but it needs to pass. It needs to pass Easter House at 11:30. Look at the time right now. It's only 11:29. So we're just going to be turning him around. We'll get him pre pre signaled out. Um, so how do we time this? Well, let's wait till 11. There you go. About 11:30, and then we'll bring him in on platform one. This is going to be a manual switch for us. We'll put him on platform two, so we'll clear him in. He can stay out of the way. And hopefully he'll pass here at 11.30, which is what he wanted. So that looks pretty good. And he will just sit there forever now. It will feel like forever, trust me. So what we're going to do is we're going to auto-reverse him like that. And we'll leave him. We can't pre-clear him because if we do, it will block our routing through here. So... We just need to watch out for him now. Uh, there's an intercity train. We're not doing that. There's another freight train has appeared. Bridgeton to Cumbernaut. Now, that's an interesting one. We do have a spare platform at Cumbernaut. The problem is that's going to terminate there. That's fine. So that's all we've got to do is get him into Bridgeton. That's all we have to do. Um, which we can probably cheekily do. Do we have time to bring him into platform three and get him out of there? We possibly do. We've got to get one out of platform two as well. I think we need to just wait a second. We definitely want this contract, but we can't do it at this second. Which to one. He's going to Cumbernaut three. So we'll clear him there. And then clear into Cumbernaut 3. We just need to find a gap here. So that was slightly delayed because I left him at that signal for a while. I think maybe platform 2, we can drop him in and then get him out of there. So let's do that. Let's accept him. Passing at 11.39. Well, he's going to be a little bit early, I'm afraid. We'll get, we need to get him in now, really. So we'll pre-clear him to there. And we're going to park him up on platform one. He will sit there, occupy the platform, and then despawn. But he will then give us a red token. Now, he only wants to leave uh, in a minute, so we're okay to send this freight train on ahead of him. Otherwise, normally, we just give way. We're going to turn him around, pre-clear him out of there. Now, this guy here, we're going to clear him all the way into platform one. Can you see how hard those auto signals work for you? They make life so much easier. Right, he's going to go into Bridgeton 1. Yep, and we'll flip him around, but he's going to sit there for a very long time. Because if you click on these things, look, he's got 47 minutes left. He's got 30 minutes left. So, you know, not, not to worry too much for now. So we've got another contract come in to Newton Easter House. Don't care about that. I'd like to get this, but uh, it pays 3000 So look at our active contract list now. There's the freight trains that haven't paid anything, but notice they're paying a red experience token. There's a couple here that are still active that aren't paying terribly amazing money. Some of these are paying better. So we might want to get rid of some of these contracts at some point and replace them with better ones. But for now, it's just a, a game of um, keeping things moving, building up your cash pile again. Because, you know, you think to yourself, oh, I've got 50, 60, 70,000, you think, oh, I've got a load of money. You don't, because, you know, signals are like 10,000 each, so that money soon disappears. The 
is clicked. If you put your fingers over one, two, and three on your keyboard, one is normal time, two is five speed, and three is that, and then four is that, if you really want to go quick. And then the space bar will pause it, but it's handy just pressing one, two, and three on the keyboard. You can quickly speed the thing up and slow it down. Now this guy here is a freight train that goes through Bridgeton 1, so we'll clear him to there. He's cleared to here, so they don't conflict. Freight train can wait. We'll clear him to Cumbernaut 3. And then we'll manually set the points. Oh no, Bridgeton 1, we don't need to manually set anything. There you go. Done. So the next upgrade I'd really like to get is uh, Auto Reverse, which is an automation thing. So the first freight token we get will allow us to unlock Auto Reverse and then we don't have to keep remembering to do this. We have a lot of reversing trains at Cumbernaut, and it gets a little bit tedious just remembering to uh, do this all the time. So yeah, as soon as the train comes in, just pre-clear it to the next signal, and that way, you know, you don't hold it up, and it will give you a, key, a kind of a cue as to when it wants to go. There's a freight train there, commuter train here. Bridgeton to Cumbernaut. Sadly, we can't take that. We don't have a free platform available. But what we can do is just sit on it, just wait. Um, get rid of that one. We'll just we'll just leave that in the queue. It won't go anywhere. They don't expire. So maybe when these if one of these is gone, we'll take that one instead. Where are you going? Bridgeton one. I'll have to wait a second. Okay, he's got like 10 minutes left. Okay, I'll carry on playing this until those freight trains are ready, then we'll pick it up. Okay, so uh, FR6280, which is the top one, he's almost ready to get moving here. So, oh no, he's not moving at all. He's despawned. So he's gone, right. So what that means is we've now got a red token. So if we click on this, we'll get auto reverse and we'll upgrade. And it says dead end platforms connected only from one side, automatically reverse trains. Now, bear in mind that that's only a dead-end platform, okay? So this is a dead-end platform. The moment we build off the back here, it won't auto-reverse. Actually, what happens is they drive to the end, stop, and then I think they auto-reverse. But they have to realize that they can't go that way. But if you watch what happens with this train now, I shouldn't have to click on it anymore. It should just, there you go. See how it just turned around? That's another little quality lifesaver. This guy here is 15 minutes away. So we'll speed time up. Let's see if we can get him through there. Let's have a quick look at the contracts. Into city, no freight train. So now we can take one of these. The question is, which one do we want to take? So this one is paying a lot more than that one. What's the catch? Uh, Bridgeton to Cumbernaut. So with this one, it needs to come through Bridgeton at 12.18. And then sit in Cumbernaut for about 20 minutes. With this one, it needs to come through Bridgeton at 12.19. It needs to go into Cumbernaut and sit there for 20 minutes. And then it needs to go back out through Bridgeton at 13.10. So it's quite specific. It pays a lot more money, but it needs to pass Bridgeton at a certain time again. Now notice it sits in Cumbernaut to 13.01, but it only passes Bridgeton at 13.10. So that means there's another nine minutes of management that you need to deal with here. And that's why it pays a lot more money. So you need to decide, is that worth an extra 4,000? What do you think? <laughs> okay, so let's do it. Let's, um, so let's have a look at Bridgeton's activity here. We have already got some stuff coming in at 12.19. So maybe that's not, not an ideal thing for us. Can we get it out the way from platform three? Possibly. Oh, I don't know what it just accepted then. Yeah, it accepted the right one. I thought I'd misclicked. There we go. Let's get him in. Let's get him out. He wants to go into any Cumbernaut platform, so we're going to clear him straight through. Try and get this guy out the way before the next freight train comes in. There's the next freight train. He's going to Easter House. So we will get ready to clear him to here. There we go. OK, 
get him on his way. He will then go to Easter House. So, the, the trick with this one is going to be managing this guy when he's ready. Cumbernaut 4. And also this guy's coming out soon in five minutes time. Notice how I'm pre-clearing track so that we don't hold things up. That's basically how you manage things until you get sensors to do it for you. Okay, how long has he got left? Right, he's ready. Okay, so now look. So the freight train is now leaving at the same time as him. This freight train just needs to pass Easter House on any platform at 13.34. Look at the time. It's four minutes away. So this is something else we're having to manage here. The more accurate you are with this, the better the, the money that will pay out for you. Thirteen thirty-four. I reckon that's pretty much good to go. I'm going to flick these signals over. And we'll let him go. Because I think it'll take him nearly a minute to get there, but we'll see. They are slow freight trains, but there you go. So, it's not terrible. Should have set him out a touch earlier, but it's not terrible. It's almost a minute later. 5,000 credits and a red token. Fantastic. Intercity, no. Freight train, we can't deal with. Yes, we can, because we're now a free platform, so we could bring this guy in as well. We can bring him in on platform one and make him wait, so let's do that. So we'll bring him in on platform one. 12.37 he wants to come in. So I'm just going to hold him off. And now we're going to bring him in. I'm trying to get this guy out of the way. So he's past it, but he can't go anywhere yet. We can't clear that until it's not red anymore. Now we can do it. And then we're going to put him into platform two and park him there for a bit. So hopefully you're starting to get a feel for um, <laughs> the spinning plates aspect of this game. <laughs> it really is a management game. It's, it's kind of like the train equivalent of ATC, you know, in, in the uh, controlling traffic. It really is. The only difference is with this game, you're also dealing with, you know, signal and track design, which makes it a lot more challenging. Let's have a look at these. Uh, Intercity, no. You've got to keep on top of this stuff as well. So, look, that pays 2,000, that pays 7, and that's got a lower speed on it. It's just mad. See, that one there, you see, that's now a candidate for killing a contract and taking that one because that's Bridgeton to Cumbernaut to Bridgeton can't take the freight train yet so we'll just decline that for now we don't have Springburn anyway that's 7,000 to do a run that we're already click on active contracts we've already got some here like this one um, is only paying 1,800 so why would we have this contract when we can have a better one so if we delete that out of the schedule, because we've fulfilled it, we'll get no penalty. So we can just delete that. Zero penalty. Done. That's going to create a gap somewhere in the schedule. We're going to have to wait for it. And then we can drop that new contract in instead. Let's double check these guys. So I have to click on them because I don't have some of the UI upgrades. What we could do now is quickly have a look if there's anything we want to do in here. Now, we're not going to get near five reds for a while. Command chain is useful. Um, command chain is useful because it allows you to, to chain things. So we'll upgrade that, and I'll show you what that does. So, for example, with command chain, we can click this, and then click here, and then immediately go here. Yeah, it allows you to chain the commands together. So that is another quality of life thing 
to do with um, dispatching trains. Uh, under controls, auto blocks. Do we need auto blocks yet? I'm not sure we do. Um, do we need to increase our track speed? We could do, but we don't have the money to upgrade the track yet because uh, quicker track, it's 2,000 a tile instead of 800. It's, it's a big, big jump. Um, interface. Is there anything we want to get on here? I think there is. Let's get the train labels. So we'll get that upgrade. Accompanying truck uh, trains display time of departure from the current station, time of expected arrival to the next destination, and name of the destination. So that will help us um, because when this train leaves, and we know it wants to pass Bridgeton at 1354, it will give us an estimate of its arrival. So instead, it takes the guesswork out of wondering how long will it take to get through here. It'll show us when he's thinking of getting there. So that will um, will certainly help. Um, we've also got alerts, highlighter. Is that any good? Highlights trains needing attention. Can be. Can be a good thing to have. Um, don't feel like we're at the state yet where we need to. Another one we could do, if we can get it, is the contract one. Um, where is it? There you go. Five contracts instead of three. So we'll take that. It only costs two points and that unlocks all of these what that means now is that instead of having a limit of three we now have a limit of five in that queue which definitely helps us with the uh, the old options so what does he want to go three so you see how i can queue him all the way in now now watch what happens here he wants to go to three actually it won't matter if i click to platform one it would queue that up um, and release it as soon as he was released. But he wants to go to three, so we'll just send him to three. So a new contract come in. Do that. But this is better now. You can see I've got timers here, which is just making life so much better because we don't have to sit there clicking on him all the time. Okay, so I'll let this run until these freight trains are ready, then we'll pick it up again. Right, so here he is. He is now moving out, and we know he wants to pass Bridgeton at 13.54. I'm just looking where his estimate is, because it's not showing us his, est his estimate to get to Bridgeton, is he? Like it said it was going to. So it says Bridgeton any 13.54. So that's not his estimate. That's uh, unless he has to be moving to give an estimate, maybe. 1304 yeah so in any event we're gonna have to leave him parked there for a while there's nothing we can do because um we're like 50 minutes too early which is a very interesting mechanic isn't it because you might think oh i've only got him parked there for a while but that means he's parked there for like another 50 minutes now the interesting thing is though we wouldn't we don't have to leave him here but what we could do is we could create a piece of track down here and just put him there for a while and then free up that platform for something else, which is a better use of the platform, isn't it? So why don't we do that? Why don't we... Um... Incidentally, by the way, you can't build into a better track that's already allocated or occupied. So what we to build onto this track here, what we have to do is cancel that so that we can then extend off it, and then we can um, put that back, you see? So that's one thing to note. So what we can do is we can build... Let's just say go there like that. Just create a little piece of track. This will be just for him. And we'll even give him a little manual signal. Like this. And we'll get him down there in a second. And he can wait there and we can pick up another... Can't put him in there yet. Now we can. Coming on Bridgeton 1, like that. Right, now they've passed. We'll set some switches. And we'll get him down there. That also means we, should, we can be a bit more accurate at getting him into the, uh, the platform on time because we're a lot closer to Bridgeton now. So we can estimate his time a bit better. But it does mean that we've got to keep our eye on him. Now then, 
Down at Bridgeton, you'll notice we've got a gap in the schedule. That's because we deleted that contract earlier. Uh, some more contracts have appeared, interestingly enough. Get rid of that one. Because we have a, a list of five now, we get quite a bit of choice here. Um, we've got Intercity we can get rid of. We've got two freight and a commuter. This commuter train is the one that we were going to replace. So we can drop that in somewhere here, I think, and it should still work. But in the meantime, we can potentially get this freight one going. Or one of these freight ones going. One's worth 8,000, the other worth 6,000. Um, this one's worth 10,000, but it goes to a platform we don't have, so we'll get rid of that. What's the difference? Well, this goes from Bridgeton at 13.13 to Cumbernaut, where it will sit for 20 minutes, and then it must go past Easter House at a certain time. Um, but the gap between that and that is only five minutes, so we'd only have to sit him here for five minutes and then send money away. So that's a good one for 8,000. This one uh, goes from Easter House to Cumbernaut, sits there again. Well, actually, it's a longer time, about half an hour, and then it has to pass Bridgeton. This is a better one. So the question is, when do we bring him in? And I've just caused chaos down here by not paying attention. Uh, where do you want to go? Bridgeton 3. There we go. You're going to Cumbernaut 3. So when do we bring him in? Well, we could chuck him on platform 1 right now. Uh, so why do we do that? And then we can bring that other commuter train in here somewhere. Okay, so in he comes. Let's put a auto signal here because it's frankly getting tedious not having it. So that way we can clear that. And we're going to put him all the way up to Cumbernault 1. So the money's starting to flow in nicely now. He will sit up in Cumbernaut for 40 minutes. He is almost ready to go. Can't remember where he's going. Cumbernaut any. So he's going to despawn. He's actually going to despawn out of here in 30 seconds. He's not going anywhere that we have to worry about. Meanwhile, down at Bridgeton, we have this train arriving on Platform 1. We have space for another train on Platform 2. It's just a matter of when we want to bring him in. Actually, the freight train's coming on too. He's going to Easter House. So we could bring him in soon on Platform 3. I'm just trying to get the timing of this one right. Because I don't want him to conflict with this commuter train. There you go. He just despawned. Um, so you could look at the freight train and say, well, we could take him now. Go and park him on Platform 2. And get another red token out of it. It's another way of doing it. So this freight train should come flying through. So I'm going to bring this contract in in a second, just as he comes in. There you go. So this contract's here, uh, this one. We're going to bring that in now, this commuter run, the new, the new commuter run that replaced the one we deleted. We'll bring him in on platform three. Now, this is a trial service again, because it's the first one of the contract. Get him out of there. So we need to run as quickly as possible. So I deliberately delayed it behind this freight train so that when he's ready to leave, he's cleared that signal. That's what I was trying to do. So he's now cleared. Which platform do we want him to go in on? Four, probably. So we'll go all the way to four like that. And this is effectively the same train as we had before, just a better paying contract. And that's why you've got to keep your eye on the uh, on the contract list and get rid of ones that aren't paying very well. So now we just need to make a decision about this guy. Which platform do we outbound him? Looking at this... You could get away with two, but three is a safer bet. So let's send him into three.
There we go. And I think he got a pretty good run through there. There you go. 70%. That's not bad. So now we got rid of a contract that was paying 1,800 and replaced it with a contract doing the same thing that we're now getting 5,000 for. So, um, and obviously the penalty's high if he's late, but I think we can make that work quite easily. Cool. So we've got a nice little network going. We've got 60 grand in the bank. We've got two red tokens, plenty of green, and we've got freight services running quite nicely. We could probably take on another freight train and bring him through. Maybe put him on uh, platform. Just get rid of that. This one's only paying a thousand, um, but it's a very simple service. Bridgeton to Cumbernault despawn, but for a thousand, it's worth it for a red token. It's 20 minutes for a red token, basically. But I think, you know, this one is a lot better. East, Eastern House to Cumbernault Eastern House is a very simple contract. Uh, so we can just accept that straight in. Platform one. We know we're going to park him on platform two. Um, and a lot of the game is, is exactly this. It's analyzing the contracts, picking out the most profitable ones, uh, and making sure that your, your rail network is still up to the task. You know, now I'm thinking about expansion. Yeah, I'm thinking about what are we doing next? Where are we going next out of all this? Um, is what I'm thinking. I'm getting rid of anything that's a thousand pretty much. It's just not worth it. Bridgeton to Cumbernault. Nice, but we don't have a free thing. We could leave it in the queue for later, maybe. But yeah, I think that is it for this episode, guys. In the next episode, what we're going to do is we're going to start expanding. We're going to go out to a different station. There's, there's a bit of debate over where we go next. We could go all the way out to Steps or Springburn. Uh, we could potentially link through into Glasgow Central go off that way we could loop back and come this way there's quite a few options um i'll have a think i'll let the money build up a little bit as well because we need a bit of money for expansion hope you're enjoying this series so far hope you're learning a lot we've got more to do lots more automation it's still a bit manual but in this episode we've made it a lot easier on ourselves and we've started to accumulate these red tokens which is a very valuable thing to do please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it until the next one take care happy training